And good morning. We are officially live, broadcasting only on onedealaway.com slash live. My name is Nev, and this is Money Matters. We broadcast live every single morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, or as I like to say, New York Time for my international viewers, because we do have audience from all over the world. And that is absolutely amazing. Now, today is Sunday, and uh, all day yesterday, uh, for whatever reason, I thought it was Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, Sunday, because it was Saturday, but I thought it was Sunday, um, only to realize, wait a minute, no, Sunday is tomorrow. So somehow I lost and I gained a day all in a couple of hours, which was quite exciting, quite exciting. So today we have a very important show. We're going to be talking a little bit about crypto. We're going to be learning a bit more about different protocols, but before we do that, there is news as to who stole your Bitcoin if you actually fell uh, prey to the uh, Twitter account uh, takeover that happened not that long ago. So we actually have news as to who stands behind it, and I think you will be kind of shocked to find out, or maybe not, I don't know. Then we also experienced a a flash crash inside Bitcoin and we're going to be discussing as to what happened there and why and when it happened because some of us slept right on through it I'm one of them so I didn't even know that it did this but I have learned that in the news and then of course we're going to be talking a little bit about news what's happening with Chainlink and the lawsuit or a potential lawsuit right of what's going on there uh, and then we're going to be learning a little bit more about um, Aave and their Lendcoin as well as Ampleforth. Yesterday we discussed a little bit about Ampleforth and today I promise that we're going to go in and actually learn a bit more as to what Ampleforth is and how it works and so that way we're going to be learning a bit more about this particular um, altcoin and I think it's a very exciting altcoin uh, but again it's it's a uh, it's it's a uh, the whole channel the whole show everything is for educational investigative purposes and none of it here is financial advice all right now that we've covered the basics let's do this <laughs> And good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Sunday, August 2nd. So happy Sunday, happy August to everybody. Um, and let's get started. You know, I want to start with the whole Twitter news. And, uh, uh, you know, if you recall, there was a, a sort of a takeover from the Twitter, right? And uh, what had happened is that uh, there were individuals or individual, we didn't quite know what was happening, that kind of uh, broke into Twitter uh, from the back end, took over some of the major names, took over their Twitter handles, put in this like super scammy message that says, send me Bitcoin, I'll send you twice as much. And I don't know why people still fall for it, but people fell for it. And it turns out it was a 17 year old that bamboozled them all. That's right. A 17-year-old from Tampa, Florida has been arrested and accused of being the mastermind behind the Twitter hack that repeat, uh, reaped at least 100000 in Bitcoin from victims in a matter of hours. Some 400 people have actually sent money to these addresses. I don't know why people would do that, but they did. And so, of course, what happened? Well, their money was taken. But here's the thing, here was the first clue that we knew we were dealing with somebody whose frontal cortex is not quite operating as, as much. Now, this uh, uh, individual, Mr. Clark, who is only 17, uh, recent uh, high school grad, uh, you know, while his frontal cortex, which uh, if you know anything about the brain and kind of how it developed, it doesn't actually develop until we're in our early 20s, which is why sometimes when we get into that like 18, 19, 20 years of age, we tend to do stupid stuff. It's because this guy over here is not firing on all cylinders. It's still developing. It's still growing. 
And so, uh, you know, the part that is kind of scary about the whole fact of the fact that a 17 year old could pull it up, not from the technological perspective, but from the thinking perspective. Right. And so what makes him very dangerous in my mind is that unless we can, you know, uh, help him sort of uh, transition his high technological power into using it for good is how much more bad he could actually do once his brain fully develops. But as of right now, what was some of the triggering components that I'm like, I don't know, you know, uh, there's a, there was some sort of questions about it. A, he was using Bitcoin addresses, which could be easily traced. Uh, B, it, uh, you know, the, the whole scammy message of kind of how to do it. The less sophistication piece, the, the fact that he's not using some of the other components. So anyways, there was a lot of errors in it. I think shorting it would have been greater to sort of put in some sort of fake news, have people force them into the selling and uh, uh, make money that way. That would have been a probably a much better way to accomplish what he was attempting to accomplish, which is basically walk away with some money. Uh, but that's not what happened. Um, and not that I am giving him or anybody else advice of how to become a criminal. I'm just saying that would have been, a, a, you know, probably a bit smarter scam than just sort of send me a Bitcoin. I'll send you two back. Uh, folks, it's, it's like that letter of like, you know, just send me a dollar and, you know, watch magically as 50 other people send you a dollar. Like it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So stop pain <laughs> stop falling for those kinds of things all right let's continue with the story uh, he did have accomplices a 19 year old from uk and a 22 year old from orlando and it sounds like after rigorous investigation involving tracking ips and bitcoin payment addresses u.s investigators narrowed their search uh, and found clark culpable of being the mastermind of the twitter hack no, he actually schemed to steal the identities of well-known people, then impersonally asking people to send accounts that he owned. It uh, it appears that he also, that his uh, colleague, shall we call him that, uh, Mr. Shepard, uh, you know, uh, he used a, a driver's license, which you actually have to do that, and uh, uh, to uh, register with Binance and Coinbase. So again, you know, uh, uh, quite brilliant of what they were able to do with the hacking from the technology side, not so much from kind of how they were doing things because why would you register on a centralized exchange to do these things anyways um not that i am given again please no no advice do not use your powers for for evil as i always tell my students and uh, some of you may know i mean my students uh, a range in age anywhere from um you know the youngest ones are of course uh, my babies uh, and they are, you know, um, basically one has just become a teen and the other one is lagging a few years behind. So they're babies, babies still. Well, not really babies, but babies. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, so they range there, uh, you know, all the way up to individuals who are in their 50s and 60s. So I have a very wide range of students and of course um, I try to put my courses and that kind of stuff in different languages and different ways that I do it and uh, of course I will mentor the younger ones uh, way more and way differently than I would somebody who is in their 50s or 60s um, of course use a little bit different language and different ways to explain some stuff to folks although I tend to simplify things very easily so that even my kiddos can watch some of these things and get vast majority of them um, as well as the courses that we do um, you know they get all of them they get all of the stuff which is absolutely amazing i mean they're just brilliant kids anyways but i do have a, a healthy number of individuals that are uh, you know sort of late teens early 20s uh you know in their 20s and 30s as well so um, a lot of folks that are between that range and uh, for those that are about you know 18 19 to the 25 to 30 years of age i always point out you know you have a lot of power you have a lot of knowledge i need you to use your knowledge and power for good and not for evil and that is the advice that i'm giving you and giving everybody else that as you learn about some of these things and as you become better at some of the stuff always 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 use this guy this guy these guys this guy for good versus evil okay 
try to find win-win strategies because those are the strategies that are going to help you long term sure you can go in and scam somebody out of a dollar but you just scammed yourself out of potential hundreds of dollars in the future from that same person my way of thinking about the whole thing my way of educating my students about the whole thing is you know find a way that you can win and they can win you know take 50 cents today heck I'll take a penny today if it means that I can get hundreds of dollars later in the future and you only do that by providing more than what you take right give more than you take right uh, uh, you know listen more than you speak care more than you're being cared for and before you know it you build trust and with trust you're able to do so much more so always take of other people's needs as much as you can before you go for your own I know I know it can be hard sometimes it can be challenging but if you were to switch that small little piece inside your life inside your business inside your investing inside all of the things that you do around your life health wealth um, and network you know all of those things I promise you your life ends up turning around so anyways I'm off of my little uh, rent chair um, let's go in and talk about what just happened with the Bitcoin and uh, the the Forbes says massive Bitcoin flash crash just created 1 billion of crypto chaos I don't know that it was a massive Bitcoin flash crash so let's talk about what happened hold on just a second I gotta open my window it's really bugging me but I'm afraid that the cars are gonna come or motorcycles and then we're not gonna hear each other or you're not gonna hear me well um, anyways so massive Bitcoin crash what happened well what ended up happening is that uh, Bitcoin uh, basically had undergone a uh, went up hit about uh, 1200 they've actually broke 1200 and then next thing you know is boom uh, uh, Luxembourg Bay Bistamp exchange early Sunday morning only to plummet 12% uh, to 10.5 uh, within the hour so uh, I don't know that I would call it plummet right uh, in Bitcoin in crypto space that is just a move right <laughs> it's not a plummet now what I would have called the flash crash is if it went from like it hit 12,000 then boom all of a sudden fell to a thousand or three thousand then heck yeah that would have been a massive flash crash and that would have been plummet right uh, but anyways you know that's kind of how you sell news uh, uh, speaking of what actually ended up happening with that is we don't really know people are uh, uh, basically guessing that there was a uh, uh, whales that actually have gone in and that uh, have uh, you know sold uh, quite a bit of, of the, the, the move um, so anyways let's take a look at what's going on inside the crypto market right now and as you can see and uh, let me actually refresh it just so that we get the freshest news possible as you can see the Bitcoin is now at 11 uh, 141.85 so let's take a look at what happened so we're going to go and investigate give me one day please and uh, here you go this is actually what happened so you will see that we hit uh, what is that the price of a little bit over twelve thousand twelve thousand and thirty dollars at 48 cents thank you very much and then all of a sudden it just went boom uh, within minutes and uh, it actually fell down to this thing says that it fell down to uh, 11 something but I am actually learning that when you go on coin market cap and do these charts and stuff it's not always a hundred percent accurate when you do this stuff so just something for you to be very very cognizant about I find that there's some other areas um, coin gecko I think might have a little bit cleaner more accurate chart but again it's different exchanges so the price is not always exactly the same that's one of those things that's kind of weird about the whole thing is that um, it reminds me a little bit of real estate right it's it's in the eye of the beholder you know we can all look at the same house and evaluate it very differently right so um, that's kind of where the Bitcoin and crypto stand right now with so many exchanges you get all these different competing information and news so then it kind of uh, 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 came down and it's been sort of staying flattish but I am seeing a little bit of a 
sort of lower piece uh, that is also happening here. So what we're seeing and what they're saying is that what likely has transpired is uh, that uh, they are basically saying that uh, there was a lot of uh, a, a drive of people selling Bitcoin. So where was the thing? I didn't highlight it because I didn't think it was a, a great thing. Uh, to highlight and kind of worry about but they're basically saying could have been caused by so-called whales who control ra large amounts of Bitcoin and uh, we did see that uh, I think even yesterday we did talk about the fact that uh, there was quite a bit of money sitting on exchanges so this is not a weirdest thing to have happened I want to say it was like uh, 70,000 some uh, uh, people or I don't know if it was people but it was accounts that uh, that were liquid that sold stuff so that is kind of an interesting piece uh, speaking of uh, coin market cap um, let's do take a look at the uh, the exchanges kind of what's going on within it so as you can see Bitcoin is actually down in a 24 hour period uh, a little bit over 4% uh, let's see Ethereum is up 364 so we're approaching that 366 level that uh, some of the, the the traders and analysts have been talking about that that could be a critical mass that if it hits that if it doesn't kind of shoot on up it'll probably kind of come down so we'll see XRP is uh, uh, up 6% uh, tether is tether but XRP has actually taken over tether in the market cap and has actually has moved up to the third position yet again uh, then we see quite a bit of losses throughout the market uh, chain link is up uh, it's the only one in the top 10 that is actually up well it's not the only one Ethereum is up and Chainlink, I'm not counting Tether being up 0.03% because it's a stable coin, so it's supposed to stay at zero. It just has minor fluctuations, so I'm not even counting that guy at all. Uh, but Chainlink has actually performed really well over the past uh, 48 hours. If we were to click and take a look at the top gainers within the crypto space, you will see that uh, Hedge Trade is the winner today uh, 28 uh, percent Bancor 11 percent Chainlink 9.58 Loopring 9.5 uh, XRP 6 percent uh, Ren sorry and I should have said that in 10 uh, top 10 uh, ETH uh, XRP and uh, uh, um, Chainlink are the the, the only gainers um, XRP 6 percent Ren 5 percent Waves 4 Celsius 3.8, Reserve Rights 3.4, Ocean 3, Aurora uh, just short of 3, ETH 2.5, and then it kind of goes down. When we look at what's happening on the losing side of the spectrum, we have Quant, ABBC, um, IXL, Flex, uh, Flexacoin, IOS, Nexo, the Midas Touch Gold, Swipe, uh, Dogecoin, Compound, um, Algorand, Bitcoin Cash, bunch of, bunch of, bunch of the individual uh, uh, tokens have been going down and just in the few uh, that we have mentioned that we can see over here uh, you know they are all uh, above 7% dump with quant being the highest at 16% dump now the interesting piece is that we're seeing some of a very good in my humble opinion very good altcoins that have uh, taken a bit of a dump uh, compound having a potential for that, right? Uh, um, uh, let's see, Ampleford being one of them, Kyber Network, which we've actually talked about. And we're actually going to spend time talking about Ampleford today. So we've mentioned it uh, before, and I'm actually going to open it in a new link because uh, we're going to be talking about that. Um, uh, Kava is going down, EOS is down. I mean, there's a lot of good um, things that exist within it that are all down. I mean, you can see it's mostly uh, red. It's mostly red um, all over the place, some more, some less, uh, but you will see. We're also going to be talking about Ave um, as well today, and so those are two that we're going to cover today. Um, this is all meant to for educational purposes. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let me... Let me liquidate. Let 
before we continue. So that's my version of liquidation today. I know that some coins have liquidated, NEV has liquidated, and now we can go in and learn and study. And what I want to do right now is I want to talk about two specific projects for everybody's education component. Now, we've been hearing about Bitcoin, and Ethereum, XRP, uh, you know, Tether, which is stablecoin. So I want to actually use some of these components when we go in and talk about stuff is to start uh, learning more about different projects that are happening, different DeFi projects, altcoins, if you would. And Ave is one of them. So I want to actually spend time. Sorry, my nose is super, super itchy. And uh, maybe I'll get angry today. I don't really get angry very often or ever. I used to, but I don't know. I just laugh at things nowadays uh, because it's mostly just entertaining now. Uh, Ave review. All right, so let's go. Let's talk about Ave. What is it? What does it do? We also have some news about Ave and what's happening in that particular space. And then we can also take a look at the coin right now. Actually, matter of fact, let's take a look at it right now. As you can see, it actually has gone down a little bit. So it's at uh, 30 cents uh, uh, per, sh uh, per share, uh, per coin. Um, you can kind of see, look at this beautiful cup formation. My gosh, that is just amazing. Um, you know how much I love these things. Uh, in one day, let's see what happened. So as you can see, it was kind of like steadily going uh, sideways, then down, then dump. And now it's steadily uh, going kind of up over the course of seven days. Let's take a look. They have been performing relatively well. They have climbed up, kind of hit a little bit of a peak, uh, come down a little bit sort of sideways in one month period. Uh, let's see how we do in one month. And uh, one month, it actually has come up quite a bit. Uh, you know, the BTC price is the orange, and then the market cap and the US price, market cap is blue, US price is green, and you can see that they are following very, very closely. So it has actually performed really well, uh, kind of gone down a little bit, a little high up. Now we're back to the down piece. So it's definitely been a, a project not for the weak of heart, but I think Ave actually does something really well. It performs really well and it gives us some additional pieces when we talk about decentralized finance. So let's learn what does Ave actually do. Um, it's a DeFi lending protocol that enables users to lend and borrow a diverse range of cryptocurrencies using both stable and variable interest rates. Ave includes notable distinguishing features such as uncollateralized loans, rate switching, flash loans, and unique collateral types. The um, Aave leverages a native token LEND that provides holders with discounted fees. So here is kind of what they were talking about, the, the, the rates. And let me see if I maybe can zoom out that we can actually see. There we go. Much better. Uh, so you can see the average uh, lending rates and you can see the interest and the average rate and we actually can go into Ave right now and take a look right there. So if you're interested, uh, it's actually app.aave.com. That's where you're going to go. So app.ave.com. Um, and right now we're in slash home, which gives us sort of what the, uh, you know, what the different deposit API is, what the variable borrow rate is, and stable rate. And you can see that there is quite a bit of what you can actually do with Ave. You can use the, the US as well to give you the market size, or you can use the native. So, uh, you know, where you can have the dark team, which is what I'm using. You can go with light team. So anyways, it's a cool place. You can definitely go in. You can have a dashboard, deposit, borrow. So you can play around with it all you want, but we're going to go in and learn a bit more. How does it all actually work? So, Ave offers the most diverse range of DeFi collateral of any lending protocol on the market. Flash loans have quickly become one of the main selling points for Ave uh, because namely they require zero collateral to use and lo flash loans simply rely on the timing of the loan's repayment. As long as the loan is issued and paid back in full within the same block it was issued, it is approved. On the other hand, if the loan is not paid back with the same block, the entire transaction fails. So what ends up happening is that you basically could go out there, 
you can borrow some money within the same sort of uh, protocol with the same block with the same sort of structure because you can't like borrow it now hold on to it then decide what you're going to do it doesn't work that way you borrow at the same time that borrow money you position to actually buy something which actually then you can go and potentially lend and then um, or you know then that lending you can potentially set and as long as you use the, the the protocol process to pay that flash loan back it and all executes within the same uh, a block then you can actually do it Ave charges 0.3 percent fee on flash loans and it's given that is used to give a steady revenue stream uh, for the for the project right flexible rates other lending platforms tend to lock users into fixed or variable interest rates and right here we could actually see you have a, a, a you can borrow um, you know let's go with the with the you know lowest to highest no how does this work I don't know how it works it should be going but it doesn't um, so anyways as you can see uh, let's go with the market size because this is just silly 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 no I don't know um, anyways you can see that there is a variable interest rate over here and then there is a stable interest rate so you could decide that you're going to basically borrow die uh, which is a decentralized uh, uh, stable coin you could borrow it right now at the variable rate because variable rate is lower now but if a variable rate was to say uh, stay at 620 and the stable rate drops down to five you could easily switch to the stable rate with it right or say that you borrow uh, at uh, variable rate but the variable rate drop uh, jumps to eight percent and stable stays at 7.96 you could actually get out of that eight percent into 796 so it gives you flexibility to kind of switch between the two that is one of those things that is very interesting and that allows the right the interest to be switched Ave has seen a strong growth in the demand for stable uh, rate loans since the deployment in May of 2020 similarly users can also take out a leverage position on their Ave interest using the swap rates which is uh, basically uh, these rates uh, are not fixed interest rates and they are not necessarily a variable rate either um, the swap rate is sort of like a less variable variable rate so you have a variable swap rate which is less variable rate and then you have a variable rate which tends to be a bit more volatile uh, so to speak Ave will soon add the ability for users to take out borrowed positions on fee collecting tokens like uniswap LP tokens and token sets this means the user could take out a loan against a position that is earning them revenue. This is going to be huge when this actually rolls out. Now, how to lend an Ave? Well, simply you visit their website, which is app.ave.com, connect using a Web3 uh, wallet such as MetaMask, Coinbase wallet, Formatic, or whatever. Uh, a lot of people use MetaMask. Um, and a MetaMask is actually going to look like MetaMask. Um, it's a Chrome extension and uh, this is basically what it would look like um, right for me it says welcome back because I have it but it's a little foxy guy and uh, that turns his head and uh, you know it's very easy to to come in uh, you know and to use this thing so um, there you go that's one of the easy ways that you can uh, put in then you add a little bit of money to MetaMask and simply click on the button then you can deposit money into it and then from MetaMask you can deposit uh, funds by selecting an asset enter the amount you wish to lend and that's that after that you just approve their access on the chosen ac um, asset and uh, sign the transaction for the deposit and you are done um, when supplying capital to Aave users receive a token um, a token or a token which follows uh, similar to compound finance token but it's a little bit different it grants you an interest earning asset each a token retains a value equivalent to that of the underlying asset for example one a die token will always have the same value as a real die token rather than uh, having a token appreciate in value with interest the number of a tokens in your balance will increase instead so what you end up doing here is that you can go in and you can say all right you know i want to get into die right 
and I want to actually, uh, uh, you know, lend. So you would go in, you will connect the wallets, right? You can uh, use multiple wallets, right? You can continue with that wallet if you just want to explore, kind of like what I just did over here. You can click on the browser wallet right here. If you have a ledger, uh, which is uh, the cold wallet storage, you can use that. If you have Coinbase, you can connect. Uh, so there's there's many different ways that you can do this and then once you go into it You simply basically lend your money It sits in and it collects interest and you know if you go continue without wallet We're clicking right over here uh, It will actually take you home Take me home and as you can see you can actually earn uh, approximately 4.35% uh, by providing uh, uh, money into this now this is over here it's going to change once you actually go in to do it it is going to shift but as you can see uh, you can earn different percentages depending on what you decide you want to lend and then you just basically lock it in let it sit there and you make money it's kind of like a savings account that's the best way that I can uh, describe it and then if you need to borrow money you can absolutely do that as well uh, and sometimes we have seen the arbitrage where you can, for example, let me show you, uh, there's arbitrage sometimes that you can find where you can actually go in and deposit here and you can actually earn more than it would cost to borrow. Probably not within the same protocol here, but if you can go into uh, some of the other decentralized um, exchanges, uh, potentially look at Uniswap and some of the other DeFi platforms and DeFi opportunities where, you know, you can earn, for example, with Aave, 5% uh, when you land, uh, but it costs you 2% to borrow. So now you're like making double the money with the whole thing. And that is arbitrage. And when that happens, that is beyond exciting, beyond, beyond exciting. So anyways, uh, just uh, just another strategy to kind of share with you of what you might be able to do. Um, let's continue. So again, you select you how much you wish to lend and then you're done. When supplying capital to Aave, users receive a token, which we already just talked about and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it goes in and basically it increases the balance so that when you go in, for example, with uh, DAI and say we deposit, you know, uh, you know, buy like 10 DAI, for example, right? Like we, we, that's, that's the, the, the volume that we provide. And it will continue to basically increase consistently that, you know, it, it's, it's going to... Con, con, uh, increase the number of a die and then of course we can exit the position whenever um, so this is exciting piece whatsoever uh, the each asset has a different collateral requirement uh, when you decide to borrow and stable coins provide a great greatest loan to value ratio which makes sense because their risk is much much lower each asset on Aave has uh, two independent interest rates, a stable rate and a variable rate, which we've just seen, and users can switch between the two however they'd like. They also have a pay, which uh, actually works in Europe only. As far as, as I know right now, it's only in Europe, but I'm sure that it will expand. Now, LEND is a utility token, and LEND is an ERC-20 token that rides on top of Ethereum, which is another reason why I'm incredibly bullish on Ethereum. Folks, if you haven't caught on to it quite yet, just about every DeFi token, every altcoin that we're talking about discussing that is performing incredibly well is riding on top of ETH, which makes ETH incredibly, incredibly exciting for me. Um, anyways, uh, with a total supply of just shy of $1.3 billion, uh, uh, 1 billion which was sold in the ICO. Lend was originally used as an utility token, but now it took on additional use cases, including platform governance. And in the future, and I will share with you in just a moment, uh, Lend tokers will be able to vote on proposals, and I'll explain what that is going to look like in a moment. And so uh, we are, uh, protocol is currently using roughly 80% of platform fees to burn Lend token on the open market. This implies that Lend token supply would consistently be decreasing, which may improve the token value over time. Moving forward, Lend will see increased staking utility to support protocol balance. And um, as, as uh, Aave supports nearly 20 Ethereum-based assets, including but not limited to a bunch of these things, from BAT to DAI to ETH, Kyber Network, Chainlink, uh, Decentraland, Maker, uh, Augur, Synthetix, 
uh, USD, uh, US, uh, uh, USD coin, Tether, Wrap BTC, and so on and so on. Now, another news that is happening with Av that uh, Ave that uh, want to know is that they are doing a migration. And so decentralized financial platform Ave introduced a new plan today, um, actually two days ago, not today, two days ago on the 30th of July. Uh, that is an integral part of their push towards a more decentralized governance structure and it also entails a token swap that converts land to Aave coin with 100 to 1 ratio. So new economic plan results from this swap as announced in blog post earlier two days ago. This is a milestone towards more decentralized governance and uh, what they're basically doing is that they will uh, uh, the token swap will provide investors with one of a token per hundred lend tokens that they hold this will result in a total supply of 16 million of Aave tokens, 13 million going to the current land holders, and uh, uh, remaining 3 million will go into the reserve system. Uh, Avenomics proposal appears to be a hit among lender investors as token currently trading up roughly 25% as the current price of 0.32 uh, 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 dollars right so 32 cents actually if we look at it it's at point uh, 30 so it's at 30 cents just short of 31 cents so it could be a great place and time to potentially hold and get into lend um, again not a financial advice whatsoever i am just sharing the information with you because when you get lent you get into ave and then you get some voting capability that they were talking about so again if you're interested to learn more about ave it is going to be on app app dot ave a a v e dot com um, that's where you can go in and learn more about that so that is one of the coins that i wanted to review with you now i want to actually go in and talk to you about or talk with you about what is ampleforth we talked about ampleforth you might have heard all kinds of excited about ampleforth and ampleforth is very very different than many other uh, uh um, altcoins water then we continue okay thank you for your patience all right so Let's talk about it. What is Ampleforth? How is it redefining decentralized money? I think once you learn about Ampleforth, you're going to be just as excited as I am about this project. So let's go in. Let's learn about it. Let's find out how this actually could potentially change money as we know it. It is still a very young product. It is still very young protocol and process. There's not mass adoption. So it has a lot of inherent risks. But if also adopted, this thing could explode. So this is the reason why we're talking about it, sharing about it right here on one deal away and i do want to actually use this opportunity to welcome everybody who is watching this live so hello and welcome sorry that it's taken me this long to say hello and welcome and for everybody watching this on youtube do me a huge favor let me know that you're here smash that like button right now and if you are enjoying the show and you want to learn more about uh, uh cryptos and money and investing and real estate and that kind of stuff uh do subscribe to the channel and we do show every single day so feel free to join us live if you want to or you can just stay on youtube channel so your choice whatsoever just please know youtube does have full control on youtube they can ban and shut us down whenever they want to and so for that reason you know we always remind folks coming to one deal away.com is what ensures that you can continue to watch the show so anyways that's going to uh I'm, I'm done with that promotional piece now let's learn about ample forth and how it can change our money and money as a whole all right so Ampleforth is a cryptocurrency attempting to reinvent money. It is designed to be used as a collateral for decentralized banking symptom, uh, system, not symptom, system, banking system, Nev. AMPL, that's the, 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 the handle, I guess. Is that, you know, is that how you call it? I don't know. Um, operates as an ERC20 token uh, on top of the Ethereum blockchain. Folks, are you catching on? Are you hearing what I'm saying about Ethereum and ETH? All right, 
hint hint again not financial advice just something to think about because when i see so many things being running on top of eth uh, uh there is something there there is something there Ampleforth Protocol implementation of counter cyclical economic policy sets us apart from other DeFi protocols. Simply put, it means that the demand for Ample increases, uh, the supply of the token also increases. It gives Ample a low correlation to the likes of BTC and E. Now, this is very, very important. So not only is it counter cyclical and it goes up. So when there's more demand, there's more supply, which keeps the price at the same level. Pretty ingenious idea, I have to say. Um, and that whoever thought of it is brilliant, absolutely brilliant for thinking about it. On the other side of the whole thing, aside from creating this stabilization that is utilizing the market, the real market that kind of uh, creates the stuff, which is uh, right. Uh, it's not pegged to anything. It's not, you know, stabilized in any weird way. There's no other assets that kind of hold it down or collateral or anything like that that removes the risk. It really is the supply and demand. As supply goes, uh, sorry, as the demand goes up, the supply goes up. As demand drops down, supply drops down. So they it create coins when there's a demand. They create coins when the demand drops. They burn coins, and they are basically playing this sort of game that kind of keeps it at the level speed. And that is absolutely brilliant way to actually have money to function to be super super stable and it meets the demand it grows with the economy it shrinks with the economy and this is basically if you think about it, if you know anything about Keynesian economics um, that's what Keynesian economics teaches we don't practice that in fiat uh, they practice a version of it that we created when we absolutely needed to kind of help uh, 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 you know sort of uh, stimulate the economy uh, but you know when it kind of in a good times when we're supposed to draw down on this stuff we don't do that we uh, so what this is it's sort of uh, Keynesian economics that has aspects that work really really well uh, but not everything it's sort of Keynesian economics meet Aus Austrian economics uh, combines it mixes it together and then takes the best out of both worlds and puts it out there absolutely brilliant and you know i've been talking about the fact that i'm like i don't know exactly you know how our money is going to work and you know how it's going to be replaced i can see a case for ample forth to be that now i'm not saying it will i'm just saying it's so brilliantly created and thought well out that i could see a use case for that to be created into the future the other part is by holding it right now, what it does, because it has a low correlation with BTC and ETH and vast majority of everything else is correlated with them, that you basically can balance your portfolio incredibly well. Okay, so that's nice. Uh, overall goal is to bring back commodity money without the hard limitation imposed by commodities with cap supply and insurance like BTC and gold. In economics, equilibrium is defined as state where the demand and supply in the market find a perfect balance with each other. For Ampleforth, equilibrium is a state when a change in demand results in one for one change in supply. If there is 100 amps, uh, Ampleforths, um, I, I can't say amples, Am amples, is that how you say it? Um, and price increases from $1 to $2 as a result of explosive market demand, then the network will set its target price at $1 and expand supply by 100 amps. The supply would increase for 100 to 200 in a, price, uh, in a process known as a rebase. Rebase does not dilute existing token. It's fixed percentage of the network rather than fixed amount of tokens. So as it goes up, the amount that you hold goes up. These 300 amples uh, were just created by the protocol will be credited proportionately to existing addresses holding ample. Equilibrium is achieved when the 2x increase in supply is met by 2x uh, uh, decrease in price, keeping the market capitalization stable at $200,000 as per this example. 
So that's kind of how it works, right? So it meets the demand. It always fluctuates up and down. And so when you go into it and you hold it, you are basically a holder. So let's say that there is, uh, let's use a super simple example. Let's say that there's only 10 amples that are created. For example, right? It's more, but let's say that it's only 10. If I hold one, right? And there's a bunch of people that kind of come in and they, you know, kind of jump into the whole thing. So at one, I hold 1% of it. It increases in the market cap and all of a sudden it goes from $1 per amplifier to two. So it increases. So now we have to create uh, 10 amples uh, created, right? Well, my original uh, holding value was 1% of it. So in order to reward me or kind of to keep things the, at equilibrium, it increases my percent of holding up uh, 1%. So instead of holding one ample, now I have two. Does that make sense? Okay. I hope I have explained that to actually make sense. So ample price targeting should not be confused with the concept of stable coin. Stable coins have pegged prices and aim to eliminate volatility. Ample simply targets lower volatility. But as market cap grows and Ample becomes more liquid, trading activity will rise and traders will fight to sell orders and become arbitrators. Now, Ample use cases. Core utility of Ample is to serve medium of exchange. Ample's elastic supply movements make it ideal asset to build a digital economy around. It has the ability to become the perfect form of collateral for DeFi. Its counter-cyclical behavior also makes it a good addition to crypto portfolio. <clears throat> the project has another broader goal, to provide an independent alternative to central bank money. Now, what is the goal of Ampleford? Let's go back in history. In 44, Bretton Woods was created where basically uh, there was a decision made uh, that uh, U.S. gold is going to be uh, basically the world's reserve currency. Dollar was pegged at a certain amount of gold. And in 1971, Nixon took gold off of the dollar, make it a complete fiat currency, and gold became just another commodity. Now, there was a problem with, with being on a gold standard because gold actually has a limited supply, right? That means that the supply of money was also limited and it couldn't scale to keep up with the need and the growth and the pace of growth in the economy. Now, the problem, that was the problem with being kind of tied into it. So getting rid of it made sense because now you can actually fluctuate the currency up and down with the growth and contraction. So when we have growth, you can increase the supply and stuff. When we have contraction, you can decrease it and you can run an opposite to kind of help with it. This is that Keynesian economic that when there's a shrinkage and you want to prevent things and when you help it, you can actually boost it up. When it goes up, you kind of boost it back down and you kind of constantly do this sort of fluctuating piece that is very natural if you think about you know uh, sea life I think is the easiest way you could see the sea life uh, uh, you know really sort of uh, 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 pulse almost right and and it's sort of very cyclical so this gives us ability to do that the problem is that the governments have an ability to inflate and deflate the money supply however the problem is that they are deflating and inflating by some sort of decision making system that doesn't make sense and as they say here in the article it gave government the power to inflate money supply as and how they saw fit rather than expanding and contracting it per market demand ample takes the concept of the flexible supply from fiat currencies and eliminates the total totalitarian control over the supply so what they do is they basically decentralize it right the key aspect of Ampleford is that the market not the founders or a government get to decide what the supply should look like so as more people kind of go in there's more supply they create more uh, the more demand they create more supply but creating an asset whose value counters the traditional boom bust cycle Ample can become a crucial addition to cryptocurrency portfolios. And as I have shared here with you, as we're learning about Ampleford as a group, as a, as a team, as a network, as right, whatever you want to call it, as a channel, I can very much easily see, because you know that I believe that uh, uh, governments will issue crypto, right? But I can very easily see if uh, we eliminate central banks, which I doubt, 
if we eliminate some of the governmental meddling in the money, which again, I doubt. Uh, but if all of that is to happen, I could very much see Ampleforth or something very similar to it to be the sort of the cor currency that everybody runs off of, which is beyond exciting to me. Crypto projects have a gray area in between the bootstrapping phase and achieving product market fit. While at this juncture, the possibility of failure is incredibly high. Ampleforth is at this phase. Great idea, brilliant thinking, amazing stuff behind it, but the market cap is still below 10 million, making it super high risk play with an immense, uh, with an immense payoff in the event that the network achieves its vision and it gets adoption. And I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, here is where you can actually, let's go and take a look at the price. As you can see right now, it's at $1.13. Um, as you can see, it was kind of like stable. We saw some uh, big movement over here. Let's take a look at one month and get a cleaner and clearer understanding of what's going on. And as you can see, we have right here, the orange is BTC. Uh, uh, the uh, green is the price in US and the light blue is market cap. And as you can see, the market cap has gone down up. It has actually contracted uh, right over here and now it's actually back on up. So you will see it's contracted and now it's starting to kind of uh, tickle on up. So we'll see how this is going to go. The, the market cap right now is uh, at $368 million. Uh, so it's very, very low right now. It has very big potential, but it also has a huge risk attached to it. So if you decide you want to go in and invest in Ampleforth, that is your own decision. Do not use anything here as financial advice. Do your own research, dig a little bit deeper, and uh, you can find more information about Ampleforth on their website, which is ampleforth.org. All right, so this is where you can go in, learn more about the adaptive money, about their technology, about the economics. You know, they have a GitHub over here. If you're a programmer, go in and take a look at their code. If you're not a programmer, you want to go take a look at a code, go for it. You probably won't understand many of the stuff, but you might understand some stuff. It never hurts to take a look into it, regardless whether you can read it or not. So anyways, I hope this was really helpful to you, that you have learned a great deal do hit that like button right now if you haven't already. Spread the news. Help me help others. Let's help change people's lives when it comes to money, economics, finance, and their preservation and wealth growth. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing excellent. Have an amazing rest of the weekend. Do continue learning and studying. Do something fun for yourself. Do something that you love. Do something for somebody that you love and care for. And help somebody out if you can. And the simplest way to do that is by smashing that like button. Do subscribe. And I will see you tomorrow. Until then, stay forever money blessed. And do remember, you are only one deal away.